Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number, 250. So here's the deal. I gotta go run a few errands. I gotta check on the church. I thought I'd bring you with me. Come back, talk about business, answer your questions. Sound good? Let's go. So things have been moving along um, slowly, but we're actually getting to the point where some like cool stuff is happening. One of the things that we're doing is like restuccoing the entire outside. We also are are like doing this like really cool like metal and iron front door um, that is actually getting installed today, which is exciting. The plumbing is finished, the electric is almost finished, and the HVAC is finished. <laughs> so some big things have been happening, but it's it's just taking so long, and it's also so um, much more, not much more, I guess it's all relative. It's more, it's more expensive than I thought. Um, maybe someday once we're all done, I'll tell you actually exactly how much uh, money I have invested into this and then how I will sort of recoup my money and actually use this as an investment because this project is an investment for me. And so that is kind of business related. And so why not talk about this stuff? I'm not sure if you find this interesting. If you do, gentlemen, drop me one of these to be like, yo, Alpha, this is kind of cool. So it might look worse than it did last time you saw it, but uh, but the bottom line is that we are about to restucco everything. And so the fact that there are like boards there, we actually pulled off the old stucco that was on there. Behind the plastic are these beautiful, amazing like iron and glass windows that look like an old church. And it's gonna look very similar to the front door. Let's go take a look at that. Take him in? Yep, yep. Wow. It looks so good. Um, you guys might not have seen this since we painted it. Um, we, we painted the whole place. It's white. Um, it's going to be very bright in here. Um, it's going to look amazing when it's all finished. We've got all the condo in it. Actually, let me just show you back here. We got rooms going in back here. Right, this is going to be an office, another room, a bathroom, another bathroom, and then this is sort of like the uh, closet for a lot of the duct work. And over here, we have another sort of hallway with a few more rooms over here. And then, I'm going to go up there. And this is upstairs on the mezzanine. Um, it's a really cool area. The ceilings are only about like nine and a half feet tall, but um, it's really cool and a great use of the space. And so you can see what it looks like down there. This is the point where I get like all excited. Now I'm starting to see like things kind of come together and the vision is sort of coming like to life. Um, up until this point, we were doing a lot of like the unsexy stuff, you know, dealing with engineers and architects and, and you know, putting in stuff in the basement to support the floor, replacing floor joists. But now it's starting to really like look like what I envisioned it to be and, um, and it's super exciting and um, things in progress is actually really moving fast. I think we'll probably be open in another like month and a half. So it's, it's, it's gonna move fast. And so when it's all finished, I'll come back and do like one final sort of, you know, reveal where I show you the outside. Actually, speaking of the outside, let's go out there. Check it out guys, scaffolding, very exciting. We are about to restucco the entire uh, building. It's going to be like kind of like a white the windows are like a black metal with like those big, you know, window panes and stuff like that. But yeah, it's kind of cool. You want to see in the basement? The basement is, at, oh my God, they're actually putting this stuff on. What's up, man? You guys going to make it look pretty? Yeah. <laughs> So they're starting to prep the walls to get it ready for the stucco. I didn't realize like what a big deal like recovering a building with stucco was, uh, but there's so much like detail and intricacies that goes into it. It's really fascinating. Um, if I would have known <laughs> before, I probably would have just said, ah, let's just paint it. And this is the basement. What's up, man? What's going on, man? How you doing? <laughs> Good. 
So this is kind of like, so this is kind of like the belly of the beast. Um, all of the HVAC, all of the uh, plumbing, everything is running down here. We have three units, and so there are three like big, like I don't, I, I'm scared to actually see what the air conditioning bill of this place is gonna be. But uh, just to run you through, right? Wow, all this is all new. Check this out. Look how old this is. The foundation of this church is basically in like bedrock, right? It's super old. Like I said, the um, the building was actually built in 1845, and so just to come down here and to see sort of how they did things back then and the way that they like just like jammed rocks in places just to keep things level um, is pretty amazing. And as you can see, there's lots of like steel beams in here. We had to like dig footers and put those beams in. We had to put like 40 of them in, have them made, and um, because everything is sort of like out of level, um, all of them had to kind of be like fabricated on site which was kind of crazy um we had to actually then dig down like footers in order for them to be on like solid ground the amount of engineering and the amount of over engineering that went into this place and this floor is ridiculous gentlemen let's get out of here let's go back to the office talk about your specific amazing business question did you enjoy this do you do you like this kind of stuff or or no say yes or no down below say alpha this is pretty cool or no alpha this kind of sucks and before i forget gentlemen did you see did you see this week's original Tiege content. If not, I think you might want to check it out because it is all about how to spot or know if a woman's like kind of checking you out and into you. Five signs, gentlemen. The video is epically awesome and you should definitely check it out. It's going to be linked down below. Before we get to your business questions, I need some coffee. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've kind of like just like hijacked you today. Do you dig this? Do you, you want to roll with me some more? Anyway, I'm having fun having company. I'm a lonely dude, guys. I don't have many friends. <laughs> so, I, I'm actually not kidding. What's up, Jamie? Uh, can I have a large coffee with a uh, one sweet and low and some sprinkled cinnamon? Large coffee, one sweet and low, and some cinnamon. That's all for you today? Yes, please. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll see you at the window, Aaron. So if you've never tried like cinnamon in your coffee, it's amazing. <laughs> just, just throwing it out there. That's how, I, that's how I order my coffee. It's black with one sweet and low and a little sprinkled cinnamon. This vlog is the worst vlog ever. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Your business questions and now. Oh, caffeinated. Gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I am, I am, I'm feeling good today. I've gone through this like, like this up and down and, and, I don't know, man. I, it's like the longer this whole like situation goes, the more I'm just like, man, this really sucks. Not that it hasn't sucked, you know, before, but I don't know. I just miss people. I think that's the bottom line. I miss giving my mom a proper hug. I miss walking by people and not like holding my breath. Little things like that, like little things like that. It's actually a big thing. And I don't know when the heck things are getting better, but the fact is I am so thankful that I get to spend a little bit of time with you and talk about business. And I got to be honest, I think my businesses are sort of what keep me sane, right? If I didn't have a job right now or if I was, you know, unemployed and I was looking and I think I would, I would legit go crazy. But, um, you know, having something to do, having, having, you know, things that I'm responsible for, it definitely helps. And I got to be honest. You know, T. Shanley, Pete and Bajor, Enemy, all of my businesses, we have had to modify and adjust the way that we have done things with this whole, you know, situation that we've been dealing with. And it's been an incredible learning experience. Running a business through this time is something that I hope you never have to figure out. I hope you never have to do, but you never know, right? You never saw this coming. Nobody saw this coming. And having to you know, figure things out along the way. I got to be honest, the people that are going to make it through this situation and not have to close their doors, or even if they do have to close their doors, they come back, you're going to come back bigger, stronger, faster, and, and more resilient because you have seen something and experienced something that, that nobody has, has technically ever really experienced before, at least not in this country. And so I think there is definitely value that you're going to learn looking back but going through it, it, it definitely sucks. This first business question is an amazing one, and it's something that a lot of entrepreneurs are gonna face. You have a lot of ideas, but you're not sure which one is the one to sort of go after. Um, and I've got, a, I've, got, I've got something we might wanna do in terms of a little exercise to help each other in a second. He says, hey Aaron, I have a lot of ideas, but I'm not really sure where to start specifically with any of them. I think the biggest issue is understanding whether or not the idea is marketable. Have you ever had this issue? Of course I've had this issue. 
Um, you know, what, do you, what is my advice? So what I would recommend, and I don't know that if you're going to be comfortable doing that, but I think it would be really cool if you out there, it, it, and, and this could be our friend or this could be you just watching this, if you've got a business idea, start the comment with business idea and tell us what your idea is and sort of let us, you know, sort of go through some of them and let me give you my idea in terms of do I think there's a market and, and just give you feedback. Um, I don't know you, so I don't need to not like hurt your feelings. And I think that this is one of the things that is like missing with a lot of entrepreneurs. One of the problems that many entrepreneurs face is when they've got an idea, they don't know where to go, right? I'm not really sure if this is an, uh, an idea that I should go after. I'm not really sure, right? You've got a lot of questions. And so what do you do? Of course, you ask your friends, you ask your family members, people that love you, you know, hey, what do you think of my idea? What do you think of my idea to sell diamond plated coffee mugs, right? And they're going to be like, oh yeah, I think it's amazing. Great idea. They're not good people to ask because they don't want to hurt your feelings. They've got to sit next to you at Christmas dinner or wherever. They aren't going to be able to be honest. They also might not be entrepreneurs. And so you, the community here, people watching this video, you have an amazing opportunity. You can tell us, tell me what your business idea is and I'm going to tell you whether or not it is shit or if it's something that I think is viable. Now, with this information and after I do that, you can do with it what you want, but I don't have to worry about hurting your feelings. I can be honest with you. And so guys, a new occurring or a new reoccurring segment I want to do on this, on this channel, if you're interested, is business idea. Tell us your idea and I'll give you feedback. I think that would be awesome. This is going to be super fun. So gentlemen, if you have a business idea and you want some, some real feedback and you're not afraid to like tell us your idea, down in the comments, start it with business idea and tell us your idea. And then maybe a little backstory or why you think this is awesome and, and what you think and why you think it's going to be a, a business that is going to thrive and maybe how you plan on marketing this because that is the million dollar question that you have to figure out as an entrepreneur. How do you market it? You can have the absolute best business out there in the world, Tish Hanley, but if you don't know or have a method of getting it out there and letting the masses know about your amazing product or whatever it is, Nobody is going to hear about it. There have been so many incredible, life-changing, world-changing products that have been invented, that have been for sale, that have died and that are out of business because the person didn't have a method of actually getting it out there. I am a firm believer that the marketing component is as important, if not more important, than the product itself. And the truth, it, it's more important, honestly, because... You know, you see a lot of products that are really shitty products that get out there and that sell a lot because the marketing message and the strategy of letting people know is super strong. You can overcome quality with just being able to talk to a lot of people, right? Now, I'm not saying that you should because eventually when you get these crappy products out there, even if you do sell a lot of them, you're going to start to get feedback. And when those reviews and those ratings start to come in, you're doomed because people look to our peers in order to get feedback and to let them know, yo, it's safe to spend my money on this or no, stay away from it because it's a crap product. Gentlemen, down in the comments, business idea and list it. If you've got a business question, more general, more specific, or more specific, you can also ask that and start the question with business question. But great question. In terms of how to know, I would say, why don't you ask us? Talk to us and then maybe we can direct you. But in terms of sort of answering this question a little more directly. You know, it's hard, right? I think what I would recommend is if you've got one idea that you think is like the best or you think might be the easiest to test, maybe that's the one that you go after. You know, certain businesses, certain business ideas are going to require more capital in order to, to get started, more time, more energy, more resources. And so if there's something like on your list, like make a list, right? Make a list. Make a, make a list of, you know, okay, this is, you know, the idea, this is the idea, this is the idea. You got three ideas. And then maybe look at it, well, how much money will it take for me to start this? How will I market this? What is the return? What is the price? Like sort of do like a, a, an analysis of the different options and whichever one has the, the, the lowest barrier to entry, maybe start there. But if there's something that you really are passionate about and really are interested in, maybe that's the one you start with. But I would say analyzing the ideas and really figuring out which ones are going to require you know, a lot of capital because that's going to be a whole different hurdle to get over as opposed to ones that are a little bit easier. You know, maybe you're doing a private label situation or you're going to Alibaba, whatever it may be. So analyze, list, 
list and analyze, and maybe that's a great place to start. Or you can start by letting us know and letting us tell you whether or not an idea sucks or we think it's awesome. And the last business question is amazing. It's actually from two vlogs ago. It's from Ice Cream Isle 11. He says, Aaron, if, the Nike, if Nike's catchphrase is just do it, my catchphrase is just thinking about it. And I totally get it, man. Um, I suffer from analysis by paralysis and often have trouble starting businesses because I tend to overanalyze and overthink the negatives, the risks, the failing, etc. Can you please explain your thoughts on the subject and whether or not you've ever dealt with this yourself? Also, after your fitness center went under, did you become more comfortable with trying and failing? So the answer is absolutely. I needed that failure, um, honestly, for me to actually move forward. And um, you know, the way that it worked and the way that I think about things is that, you know, I've talked about this before, but for my whole life, all I wanted was that fitness center, right? And I finally was able to do it. It was my dream, it was my hopes, it was the only thing I was focused on from the age of literally like 12 years old. I knew what I wanted to do, right? And so for my entire life, that was it, right? That was it. That was the only thing that was gonna make me feel happy, the only thing that was gonna make me feel successful. Now, getting to the fitness center, I did like the nutrition store thing with this dude, but that didn't end up working out. I was scared I was gonna go to jail because he wanted to sell um, this, this product that I was like, yo, I, it became illegal, and I'm like, I'm not, not even getting into this. And so I ended up leaving, getting a job as a personal trainer, but I met this woman. Anyway, we, you've heard that story before. And so we did the fitness center, and when it started to sort of go down, and the reason why that fitness center failed, it wasn't the fitness center, it was the group fitness facility um, that we started, or we tried starting called Move It, where Move It was a, a group fitness facility that we were gonna start franchising. And um, you know, it was, it was, it was a, a group fitness class where you didn't need a lot of equipment. It was like balls and bands and lightweight dumbbells and steps. We had music, we had a, you know, a, an instructor up there on a stage and lots of fun music, different classes, classes for like parents and their kids, parents for uh, classes for seniors. Like our, our little kid class was called Muscle Sprouts, right? It was super creative, it was, it was branded beautifully and we knew that this was gonna be an amazing you know, sort of, you know, franchise. And we did a, a franchise open house. And, um, and the first night that we did a franchise open house, we had like interest in, I think it was like three or four people that wanted to buy a franchise. The next day we found out some really bad news. Long story short, we ended up going through like legal battles and all sorts of things. And, and I know I'm being a little bit cryptic because the situation is not something I'm still comfortable talking about. But anyway, there was a disagreement between one of our investors, my business partner, legal fighting. We ended up deciding to walk away. And at that point, I had, I believe it was around a half a million dollars in, um, in, in loans that I was a guarantor on, right? Whether or not it was, it was equipment, whether or not it was a lease, whether or not it was a small business loan, it was like half a million dollars. And so, you know, at, that was the point at which I was driving a beer cart. And, um, you know, and the thing and the reason why I, I think that was such an amazing thing looking back. Now, at the time, it sucked like huge, hairy, unmanscaped nuts, right? It was the absolute worst. I was miserable. And the biggest reason was because I didn't know what my plan B was. I didn't have like something to fall back on. And so my entire world was revolving around this business and this business being successful. And when it was stripped away from me and it was like, I can't do anything else. It has to go away because I, like, I'm literally, I'm done, right? It made every other possible scenario like not that bad in terms of me failing. When you fail to the magnitude that I failed and had all of my hopes and dreams like crumble around me, when it was like, when, it, when you fail that bad, like what else? Like I'm bankrupt, I'm broke, I'm driving a beer cart, I've got no other thing to do. Like what, like what else are you gonna take away from me other than you know, my health, which luckily I was fortunate to have, and you know, some supportive people around me. What else, like what else do you want? I can't fail any worse. And so once you fail that bad, and I'm not wishing that on you, <laughs> or say that that's what you need to do in order to be successful, you know, every other thing that I tried, it was like, nah, no big deal. Because from that point, when that business sort of went under, and I was filing bankruptcy and everything, like I made a decision that I will never be in debt again, right? Never, like debt scares the crap out of me. And so everything else that I tried, it was like little risk, right? Like not a big deal. And so it's like, okay, well, let me see, let me try this. And so when you do that, you know, eventually I found some things that work, some things didn't work, and, and sort of you evolve. 
But I understand how a lot of people do. I'll, I'll tell you somebody else who, who I love to death, who's one of my best friends, but oftentimes I see them doing this, the analysis by paralysis. And that is my buddy Antonio, Antonio Centeno, right? He's a super smart guy. And I always joke with him that the reason why I'm able to act super quick is that I'm not that smart. And, and I don't mean like I'm dumb, like I have a low IQ, but you know, when I see a lot of my friends, a lot of the people in like the men influential like sphere or space, I see them really doing the analysis and really making sure that they've researched and read all the right books and done all the things that they can do. They spend so much time learning and not enough time executing, trying, falling down and just screwing things up and figuring it out. And for me, I don't like to read. I don't like to hear what people are doing. I just want to try it. Like, let me just try. I think I can do it. Like, and that's the other thing. I'm, 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 I believe in myself enough to know that I can try and, and figure a lot of stuff out. Now, I have fallen on my face a bunch of times because of this strategy, but I've also succeeded more often than not. And the reason is because I'm just willing to just throw it out there. Like, let me try it. If it doesn't work out, okay. You know, I'll, I'll survive. It's not going to be as bad as the big failure. Um, but Antonio and a lot of these guys in this, like, this world, they think about things and they're, they're analyzing and they, they do all of the research. And, and what happens is I'll just jump. And by the time they end up doing it, I'm a year into it. And I've made a lot of the mistakes. I've hit a lot of the speed bumps that they have yet to hit. And so I get it, right? You are somebody that, that is really worried about the worst case scenario. You know, the truth is worst case scenarios rarely happen. Best case scenarios rarely happen either. It's somewhere typically in the, in the middle. And so if you have the ability to sort of just jump, like little jump, right, and, and see what happens. If it doesn't work out, if it starts to go in the wrong direction, you know, what is the worst thing that happened? You know, the place where I am emotionally is I'm willing to risk it, right? I'm willing, calculated risk. I am not willing to do things, you know, to risk like everything and make like stupid decisions because along the way I have, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot of things that I shouldn't do. And so I hopefully will never be in a position where all of my eggs are in one basket. That's something else that I learned, you know, back then in, in the fitness center days, I had all of my eggs plus some in one basket. And now I'm like, eh, I'm going to do this a little slower because I kind of like where I am. I don't want to risk everything and lose everything if, if something goes awry. And so, so, you know, limiting your risk, trying to do things as, as methodically as possible and thinking things through. And I'm not saying not to think things through or be smart. But you obviously know that there's, this is, you know, you're not where you need to be or you're not willing to take that jump because you're so scared about you know, that, that worst case scenario or failing or whatever it is. Is there a way for you to take a small little jump and try it and get that failure like out of the way? And if it fails, great. If it doesn't, great. If you see progress, amazing. You know, it is, it is not easy though, and I get it. And I don't know, see, and that's the other thing. If I knew now what I knew then, you know, I was young. I was dumb back then. I didn't know what the potential risk was. All I knew was that I was going to try and, and I was going to, you know, be super successful owning, you know, a chain of fitness centers. You know, I didn't, I didn't even allow the, the negativity or I didn't even allow the thoughts of what if this doesn't or what if I don't or what if I, what if's never happened? It was, I'm going to be successful. And then the universe was like, no, you're not, not at this. You got to try something else. And if it wasn't for that, would I be here? The answer is, uh, the answer is no, I wouldn't be. You know, I'm, and I'm just going to tell you this because uh, we're, we're, this, is, this is what we're doing. This feels good. I am more successful, wildly more successful than I ever dreamed I could possibly be. I didn't know what success looked like, right? I still, like, at least once a week, I will, like, almost, like, catch myself like just amazed and like I, I sort of get in this like real like introspective place where I, I really start just thinking about, holy crap, like to go from there to this and to be as happy and satisfied and fulfilled as I am now, it's like, it's, it's something, you know, it, it's, it's, it's crazy to me and it's overwhelming. Um, but this never would have happened if I hadn't had that. And so would I go back and change anything? The answer is hell no. I would do it all over again in a second going through the pain, going through the heartache, going through the, the struggle, I do it again, I do it 10 times, I do it as much as I had to in order to get here. But you can't get here until you're willing to risk it, I guess. And so, I don't know if that's an inspirational story or, or just sort of 
it is what it is, but uh, I don't know if that helps. It probably doesn't, but you can do anything you set your mind to. At this point, I just fear regret. I don't want to regret things. You know, screwing things up, okay. Losing a little bit of money, okay. Don't risk more than you're comfortable losing. They say that, I mean, but honestly, I don't want to lose any money, <laughs> right? I'm not technically comfortable losing money, but they always say like when you're investing, don't risk, you know, or don't invest more than you're willing to, to lose because that is, the, that is the possibility and um, hopefully not a very good possibility, but it's out there. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to wrap things up. If you dug this blog, drop me one of these. Be like, yo, Alpha, thanks. If you have a business question, start with business question and ask it down below. If you have a business idea and want feedback, you want me to tell you, yes, I think it's good, no, I think it's bad, and why, and then you can do with that what you want, gentlemen, down below, business idea. And so I hope, I hope some of you guys will actually take me up on this because I think it would be great. I also think it would be great if, if the community then would sort of chime in and talk if they think it's a good idea because we all have different ideas, different perspectives, and we don't have to sit next to you at Christmas. Gentlemen, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. Thank you for being a part of this, and thank you for making me feel like the luckiest guy in the world. Guys, I love you. Tej loves you. We love you. Thank you for being handsome.